What's going on everyone? My name's Tenebris Infinite, and today I'm going to show you folks how to go about farming each tier of essence, from tier 1 to 3, and the best way to get literal millions of base essence as well. This should help you out at any level of the game, whether you want a ton of essence for upgrading your gear, buying stuff, or just to have massive stonks stockpiled here in Nightingale. For this video, we'll be ditching our old folded gear and be moving on with just plain old regular gear from now on. But for any time frames I put in, you can shave a few minutes off if you do have folded gear yourself. Though we will come back around to it for tier 3 essence farming towards the end of the video. Either way, enough elaboration, let's jump into how I'll make you rich here in Nightingale. So first off, not wasting any time here, let's talk about essence rates and conversions, the real pertinent info of this video. Then we'll get into the various tips and tricks that I use to speed up the process with each tier. We'll talk about two methods of farming here, one being tower runs, and the next being vault runs, which are both pretty similar in premise, focusing on getting them done quickly to maximize our essence and time spent. For tier 1 essence, we'll be heading to a provisioner realm on extreme, where we'll be earning 300 to 350 essence per run, which will only take roughly about 5 minutes when you get good at doing tower runs. Then for our next tier, we'll head to the hunt realm again on extreme difficulty, where we'll be acquiring tier 2 essence getting a similar ration of 300 to 350 per run in about 5-ish minutes. Then for Tier 3, we'll have a few options. Running Extreme Vaults for a larger dump of Essence, though costing more time without folded gear, or taking on Public Vaults, which are equivalent to Medium Vaults for less Essence but a faster turnover rate. These rates are fixed as each vault run has the same amount of essence rewards, 11 per run. On extreme, you earn 70 per bubble, netting 770 essence, and then 25 per bubble for medium difficulty, earning you 275 essence per run. Ultimately here, looking at the time spent, it's where we start to see that farming on medium is actually better than extreme difficulty for tier 3 essence. In a similar time frame, with medium difficulty, we'll earn 825 essence, which isn't a huge amount more than 770, but it definitely adds up over the long run of grinding. Then for conversions, the real secret to getting millions of essence here, we get 25 per tier 1 essence, then we get 250 for a tier 2 essence, and lastly for tier 3, we get 2500 base essence for just one tier 3. So for getting tons of the lowest essence, you always want to convert your current tier of essence down to base form you will always earn a higher profit than any other means of gathering it. Like, just for consideration, we only need 400 tier 3 essence for 1 million base essence. That is around 20 minutes or 2 medium vaults, and you'll have an excellent amount of essence for a very small time investment. So before we get into farming these towers and vaults, let's talk about how I keep my Burner Realm portals organized, because at this point, I've asked you to make like 15 Burner portals, so it's good to go over how to keep things sane when it comes to being an interdimensional being. There are three methods I use of keeping things organized with portals. First and foremost, the method that I like to use the most is creating specific builds for different portals and portal purposes. It is a lot easier to remember, oh right, the vault portals are over in the tower, rather than this is going to be portal number 12 from a long row of portals. The next method is by naming the portal. Most importantly in regards to the realms you'll be resetting. This way you can just check the portal quickly to remind yourself of the realm and biome. And the last method, which is one I think I'll start doing more often for myself, is by adding a basket so you can add in what difficulty the realm is. 
Combining all three of these methods and your portals will remain nicely organized. And you don't have to go all out building towers and stuff like I have, you could just build simple platforms, but separating your portals helps a lot for organization. So next, let's dive into essence farming itself. For this, you'll want to set up at least three burner portals so that you can reset each realm as you need to. The first of which is a Provisioner Forest on Extreme Difficulty. When you head into the realm, you'll first want to open your map and mark the location of your Fey Tower. It might be visible, but this is just to ensure that you get to it quickly. I plan on making a guide for this very soon, but to move quickly, you'll want to fly efficiently, gaining height or prolonging your flight as you need to. I'll probably cover that next week amongst another really fun project that I'll be starting in Nightingale here, so consider subscribing if you don't want to miss it. We'll then move on to the Fey Tower itself, where we'll start by casting Quake at the middle of the room. If you don't have Quake yet, just kite the enemies around as best as you can, or let your follower draw some heat for you. Another thing I hope to cover very soon is combat in this game, but we'll have to get to that when we get the chance here. Picking up the essence bubble along the way will net between 50 and 100 essence depending on the task. So it's kind of luck based for how much you'll get per tower, but you'll always get 3 drops per tower with one being a guaranteed 200, so it'll never not be profitable. We'll then grab our essence bundle and move on to the top floor. The top floor is always a fight and you do tend to see higher level enemy spawns on the top floor too, which is nice for those rare bound materials. We'll focus more on fighting in other clips though because the fight here got a bit messed up. But look at the save! Only with the power of Mary Poppins umbrellas, man. Either way, after getting the enemies that teleported to the bottom floor, we can now pick up our final essence bundle. We'll then head back to our respite and reset the realm to do it again. We'll then do the same thing for using Quake as an area of effect attack and then taking advantage of the crits it opens up when enemies get knocked over. These pure combat towers are the fastest of them all, so you can actually push the time down to like a minute if things line up right. You get a tower that's nearby and three fights in a row. Once you clear through the top floor, you can again reset and farm tier 1 essence as much as you'd like. Now for our next burner realm, we'll be setting up a portal to the desert hunt, again on extreme difficulty. Once we're in, we'll do the exact same thing. Mark the tower, fly on over, and blast through the bound on the first floor. In this tower, we have the maze puzzle, which is always the same for now in the game. So to clear this, you'll head to the right first, then through the door on your left, then down the hall to the left and through the room, taking the door again on the left, then heading down the hall to the next floor. Then for the second floor, we head to the right and through the door on the left, then, when we come to the open room, we head through the door on the right with the trap, then down the hall to the end of the puzzle, and clearing the top floor for 200 tier 2 essence. Sometimes when you reset a realm, the tower won't generate. If this happens, just immediately head on home and whip up a new realm. Then just repeat this until you have the essence counts you're happy with, for both the tier 1 and 2 essence. And then the easiest essence to farm, tier 3 essence. A lot of players might have already figured out that vaults are the best source of tier 3 essence. You get a solid chunk per run, and best of all, they're quick. It was actually vaults that showed me the gameplay of having burner realms in the first place, so they're really a MVP of game design here, as it opens up the game massively. I personally prefer to run swamp vaults as Janna is a easy farm. Getting max poison resist is actually pretty easy to do if you put poison resist on all the parts of a druidic jacket, which negates a huge amount of risk. You can use the vaults at the watch for public vaults, but I advise having a personal burner realm to do vaults at your own leisure. 
Each essence bubble in medium difficulty will net you 25 essence and again 70 on extreme. The fight against bosses in public vaults are not too difficult if you have a good setup. Critical damage is what really matters right now in the game, so trying to stack your critical damage as high as possible will make soloing bosses a breeze, but in public vaults you hopefully won't have to go alone. The thing about public vaults is they can be sped up massively by having other players, which depends on your time of day and region, but even if you're going solo, it's pretty easy to get things done in under 15 minutes. Now lastly, let's go over some Janna tips, especially if you plan to go solo on extreme difficulty. But quickly before that, a piece of just random advice here, you could skin faster by swinging away from the thing you're skinning and then swinging towards it. It's actually significantly faster. Okay, I know this is an information heavy video at this point, but for our final topic, quick tips for fighting Janna. You'll want to keep your mobility as high as possible by dodging often, using dodge to make some room between you and her whenever you need to heal. Some people like salvation, but I prefer recovery as you could just tap the button for a quick heal or charge it up to get a longer duration depending on the scenario. And with high magic power, it's a pretty good effect. From my findings, Janna's weakness is fire, but all elemental ammo will have increased effectiveness. Then just play patiently, sniping headshots as you can and keeping her within Quake's effect range. The thing that slows down extreme vaults are boss health pools. They got a lot of health, so you'll have to just be patient and stay on top of your own health. But even with just plain bullets, Pursuit, and Anidia, this rifle was able to take down Janna in about 13 minutes. I had one death from a cheaty double hit, but other than that, recovery is really all you need. Maybe some great or prodigious potions if you have them. The Harpies can get a bit annoying as most boss mobs do, but just ignore them and focus on keeping your movement up even higher when they spawn to keep your damage focused on Janna. They'll just spawn infinitely otherwise. But you can skin them for tier 3 Harpy stuff if you need it badly. Then just reset your vault and do it all again. It's good to make a habit of going on a vault run every once in a while to keep your T3 essence counts up as you'll be converting that one the most and using it to buy late game materials. And if you have folded stuff, then you should be doing extreme vaults to maximize your profits. With folded gear, it's pretty easy to get a 10 minute run on a extreme vault. If you don't have folded gear, then play on medium as again, per half hour, you'll get more essence overall. So there we go. Hopefully this was pretty clear. It could get complicated talking about farming essence because you could optimize like every puzzle in the game. But I tried to keep the focus on just doing the thing without talking for hours. If you have any questions, please feel free to post them down below. But for now, thank you for watching, consider subscribing for more Nightingale content, and I will catch you all in the next one. Until then, peace.